Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Well, I've been reading this morning uh, through the book of Romans um, as I read my four chapters each and every day. And I tell you what, I love the Word of God. I'm just in love with the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And it's hard to say that any one text is my favorite, but what a sweet and precious joy it is to read the book of Romans and just to allow the Holy Spirit to pour revelation upon revelation as we read. Now, I pray that you have been in the word this morning. I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that you've been walking with Jesus throughout this day and that you've been full of his spirit and that you have begun to see things from a new perspective and that as you make your journey toward the kingdom, that the things of this world are slowly but surely being put off and left behind you. Well, friends, we're going to continue our brief survey in the book of First John. And where we left off yesterday was simply talking about that he is light, and in him there is no darkness. Therefore, there should be no presence of darkness in our lives whatsoever. And we wanted to define what darkness was. We kind of left that to you um, to determine within yourself, to take inventory of your life and the things that are going on in your world so that you can determine what is light, what is darkness. And once you now know what darkness is, you can start to rid your life from such things. And as you do that, as you eliminate more and more darkness, you make room for more and more light, where eventually you are in the light of Jesus Christ. And in you is no darkness at all. That's what the text is wanting us to see. Now, obviously, in dealing with such subjects, he has to address the fact in verse 8, he says, if we say that we have no sin, if we say there is no darkness, well, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Well, obviously, there's darkness in us, and, and the whole purpose is for us to discover where that darkness is hiding so that we can eliminate that darkness from our lives. And the moment we eliminate that darkness from our lives, we realize that there's another darkness, and so we're in this continual process of sanctification, of purification, where we're purifying ourselves and becoming the image of the person that he created us to be. So he says in verse 9, he says, if once we see that darkness and we see that sin, if we will confess it, well, he is faithful and just to forgive us for that darkness, to forgive us for that sin. And not only to forgive us, but to give us strength not to walk in that darkness. Because he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us from all darkness. As his light moves in, the darkness flees. Now look in verse 1 of chapter 2. My little children, I'm writing these things unto you that you do not sin that you do not allow darkness into your life. But as I said in verse 9 and 10, if any man does sin, if any man does allow darkness into his life, we have an advocate with the Father. And who is that advocate? Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Now look at verse 2. Why? Because he is the propitiation. He is the reconciliation. He is the bridge back to God for humankind. Without him, without what he accomplished on Calvary, there is a great chasm, a great gulf between us and God, and we cannot reach God. But Christ is the mediator. He's the reconciliation who brings us back into that fellowship with the Father, the same fellowship that Adam knew in the garden before he first sinned. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You see, there's a misunderstanding. You hear people say all the time, Jesus loves everyone. God loves the whole world. That's kind of a misunderstanding. He offers his love to everyone. But until we become a recipient of that love, we're his enemies. We're warring against him. We're fighting against him. 
So we must enter into his love. Once we do that, then we become a recipient of that love. And yes, then he loves us. But he does offer his love to us. It's freely offered to all mankind. All we have to do is bow and surrender, recognize the fact that we need him instead of walking around in denial, thinking that we are sufficient of ourselves and we are in need of nothing. So in verse 3, he says, this is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. This is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 says, they that are after the flesh, mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, mind the things of the spirit. So if you call yourself a follower of Jesus of Nazareth, then your affections are set upon the things of the kingdom. You're walking in the spirit. And as you walk in the spirit, you're mindful of the things of the spirit and you're pressing yourself into things of the spirit, leaving behind the things of the flesh, pursuing the things of the spirit. Well, that's what he says here. We know that we know him if we're pursuing the things that are important to him. And obviously, the most important thing to him is the guidelines and instructions that he gave to us that we rule our lives by. In verse 4, he says, He that says, I know him and does not keep his commandments, you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. Why? Because if you know him, you will keep his commandments. So to not keep his commandments means that you don't know him. Romans chapter 8, verse 7 says, The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is at war with God. And it is not subject to the law of God. Neither can it be. So back to 1 John, verse 5. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. As you keep the word of God, you are being perfected into the image of God. Not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word practicing the things that you read, you hear, and maybe even you teach. The love of God is perfected in you. And this is how we know that we are in him because we are being molded into his image. Look at verse six. He that says he abides in Jesus should walk just as Jesus walked. Friends, that is a heavy challenge, an intense command to walk as Jesus walked. But that is our command. As subjects in his kingdom, we are to walk as he walked, to talk as he talked, to live as he lived. So from the moment we wake up in the morning till the moment that we go to sleep, everything about our day should be in pursuit of mirroring the life that he lived. Do you ever, ever find Jesus talking about anything to do with this world? I mean, do you see Jesus? Can you even picture Jesus? Could you imagine Jesus sitting around with the disciples talking about the Roman establishment? He didn't care about politics. He only spoke of those things when it was when he was being tested. For instance, when they said, should we pay our taxes? And he says, give me a coin. Whose picture is on it? Caesar. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Give unto God what is God's. And he goes right back to the things of God. How much comes out of your mouth, friend, that has to do with this world? I would challenge you. If it doesn't promote the kingdom, remain silent. As silent as you possibly can. Communicate as little as you possibly can and let everything that comes out of your mouth be for the glory of the kingdom. Be for the glory of the king. You see, he says in verse 7, I'm not writing unto you anything new. Man, this isn't new. This has been around since the dawn of man. This has always been God's way. This is an old commandment, which you have heard from the very beginning. But if you want a new commandment, I will give you a new commandment. Because this is true in Jesus. The darkness is past, and the light now shines. Before Jesus, friends, the message is there was no hope. 
It was like being lost in a dark, cold cave. No hope, no way out. But when Jesus came on the scene, the light of the world shone forth, and now there is a way out. And we can walk in that light constantly, detesting the darkness that we came out of and pursuing the light that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we're going to leave off right there. We'll pick up in verse 9 tomorrow. I pray these words will both challenge you and bless you and that you'll walk in a state of spiritual enlightenment today that you've never known before. Because he promised, friend, if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Oh, how I love Jesus, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next video.